let's go back to last week, NFL Week 12. I call this predictions versus reality. I kind of compare the predictions I made against the reality of what happened. Uh, basically, I love to talk about what I get wrong. And then occasionally I go, hey, I, I nailed this one and I talk about that too. So we'll start with the Raiders and the Falcons because I actually, this is my, the worst prediction I made last week. I, going into the game, was very, very certain. I thought the Falcons had no chance to win this game. I was certain the Raiders would win. And well, uh, the Falcons did win. They, in fact, they won by a lot. The Falcons won this game 46, or sorry, 43 to 6, which is just unexpected to me. And here's why I was wrong. Number one, I walked away impressed with Raheem Morris. They're four and two. The Falcons are under their interim head coach, Raheem Morris. They're playing solid football. Their defense did a lot better than I would have expected. But they, the truth here is that the Raiders were awful. I mean, I think the Raiders had probably the worst performance I have seen from a team all year. They had five turnovers. They had costly penalties. They had, they had 11 penalties for 141 yards. They were 0-2 in the red zone. They had a, a play where they they had a missed... Atlanta missed a field goal, but they got a roughing the kicker penalty that gave Atlanta an automatic first down, set up a touchdown. It's like mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake. I've never seen a horrible, a worse performance this year at least. And I go, that's why I was wrong about the Raiders Falcons. I could not have predicted how awful and how many mistakes the Raiders would make against Atlanta. Now, Chiefs Buccaneers, I picked Kansas City to win this game. I said, I don't, I, this is actually verbatim. I said, I don't think the Buccaneers had their act together enough to beat a team like Kansas City. And I nailed it. The Chiefs won 27 to 24 and the Buccaneers again they made too many mistakes to beat a team like Kansas City but they are making progress and I, I would warn people as you look ahead to the playoffs the firepower the Buccaneers have makes them dangerous and if they figure things out which it seems like slowly but surely they are pay attention to Tampa Bay I would not if I had a favorite team I would not want my favorite team to play them in the 2020 NFL playoffs now the Vikings and the Panthers. Uh, I picked the Panthers to win this game. But the Vikings actually won, 28-27. to Now, there was a weird sequence first. Before we get into what happened and why Carolina lost this game, it was kind of a crazy, unique sequence where Jeremy Chin, who's a safety, a rookie safety for the Carolina Panthers, had back-to-back -back fumble, you know, fumbles returned for a touchdown, where on a, on a third and eight play, he picked up a fumble, Ran it back for a touchdown. I went, wow, that's kind of crazy. Then the Panthers kick it off. The Vikings get the ball. First and 10, the very next offensive play for Minnesota. He does it again. He got another fumble. He returned that one for a touchdown. And I went, "How? I don't know when I'm ever going to see that in my lifetime. Where I see two back-to-back -back offensive plays that result in the same player getting a fumble return for a touchdown. It was weird and bizarre. It gave Carolina a 21-10 lead. But unfortunately, after that, from that moment on, and even before that, I guess, Carolina just missed way too many opportunities to win this game. They had two field goal misses. They had, um, they also threw an interception in field goal range. I guess maybe they also lost. Did they miss maybe three missed field goals? Because I know they also missed the game, what would, could have been the game winning field goal as well. Um, I, I just, man, the Panthers, here's the key mistake that the Carolina Panthers made. Regardless of how many field goals they missed or that, a, that interception that Teddy Bridgewater threw, uh, in field goal range it would have been it probably cost him three points the the key mistake and I, I love the Carolina Panthers head coach Matt Rule I'm on board with him I think it works give them time I said give Carolina five years because that's how long it might take but if you do it man Matt Rule could give you something very very special and I don't think it even takes that long they're already looking way better the Panthers had the ball fourth and goal on the three yard line and by the way already a three-point lead with like, what was it, uh, two minutes and 10 seconds left, something really short like that. And instead of going for the touchdown on fourth and goal from the three, they kicked a field goal. They took a six-point lead and gave the ball back to Minnesota. And I didn't understand it. It was frustrating to watch because in my head, you go, man, go for the touchdown. If you don't get it, well, you still have a three-point lead. And you're making Minnesota drive all the way down the field to score a touchdown or at least way farther to kick a field goal. But also, man, if you get the touchdown, you're up 10 points with no time left. You win the game. Like, you want a touchdown there. 
And for whatever reason, Matt Rule settled for a field goal. I don't know if they're an analytical team in Carolina. Maybe the analytics told them that was right, but I don't even know how that's possible because a six-point lead is unhelpful. What it does is it forced Minnesota to drive. Uh, it, made, it forced Minnesota to go get a touchdown, be more aggressive and try to for a touchdown rather than settling for a field goal, which would have tied the game. But I don't understand how a six-point lead late helps you when you could have had a touchdown or at least attempted to go get the touchdown. I never understood that. It it was weird. It made no sense to me. And so I, I don't under I didn't understand the thought process there. Why Matt Rule went didn't go for it to try to get a touchdown on fourth and goal from the three yard line at the very, very end of the game. Inside of two minutes. Like I was just like, what? Why? Didn't understand that move. Cardinals and Patriots. I picked Arizona to win this game. I got it wrong. Uh, another game I got wrong. To me, this was just a reminder of how good of a coach Bill Belichick is, where the Patriots defense played very, very well. New England won 20 to 17. And uh, I, I just thought, man, like Carol, uh, Arizona got out coached. I mean, Cliff Kingsbury versus Bill Belichick. Bill Belichick played a coach, a better game. His players are very disciplined on defense. And uh, despite the fact that Here's the crazy thing. The Patriots lost a turnover battle. They uh, had like a hundred, over a hundred fewer yards. Cam Newton had two interceptions, no touchdowns. Like on paper, you go, New England should not have won that game, but they did because of their coaching. And I walked away just very, very impressed with Bill Belichick. Now, Green Bay, the Packers against the Chicago Bears. I picked the Packers to win... Uh, they did. The Packers won 41 to 25. Felt like an obvious one where the Packers had a better coach, better roster, better quarterback. And then, uh, you know, Mitchell Trubisky played quarterback for the Chicago Bears because Nick Foles was hurt. He was a train wreck. I, I just, I don't, I'm so tired of watching Mitchell Trubisky play football. I did a whole video about it. Got like, got like 40 something thousand views. I just, uh, I just, I'm done. I, I, it's, I, 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 I am so disappointed every time I turn on my TV and I see Mitchell Trubisky playing. I'm like, oh, why? Well, why are we still here? I don't want to do this anymore. Now, I picked the Titans to beat the Colts. Uh, the Tennessee Titans did win. I nailed that one. The Colts defense was missing a couple key players. They were missing uh, defensive tackle DeForest Buckner. They were missing linebacker uh, Bobby Okariki. A couple other people, too. Um, and I said that Derrick Henry would have a huge day. The Titans running back, he did. Derrick Henry was phenomenal. The Titans won the game 45-26. to Derrick Henry ran for 178 yards and three touchdowns. And, uh, I mean, I just, I nailed that one. I just, I knew that without some key players in their front seven, Indianapolis is going to have a hard time stopping the Titans on first and second down. Derrick Henry would have a big day. He did. And uh, that is why the Titans won that game. I picked the Dolphins to beat the Jets. Another just obvious one. This, I called this game a mismatch. I said that. You know, Tua was hurt, and there was some doubt whether Tua or Ryan Fitzpatrick would play. I said it didn't matter who would play quarterback for the Dolphins, and by the way, it didn't matter. Uh, the Dolphins won 20-3. to Sam Darnold had two interceptions. Uh, Tua didn't play. It was just sad and ugly, and, I mean, Miami's a very well-coached football team, and uh, I, I just, uh, the Jets are terrible. I, I don't want to watch the Jets anymore at all this year either. The 49ers and the Rams. Uh, I, I picked the Rams to win. Got it wrong. I, I, was, I walked away very impressed with the 49ers. The 49ers beat the Rams 23-20. to They had a last-second field goal. Nick Mullins, the backup quarterback, who I'm starting to think, despite the fact he's not great, I still think Nick Mullins is better than Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, he had a last-second field goal drive to give them the, the game-winning field goal, I guess. And, uh, I mean, think about this. A... 49ers team that's been destroyed by injuries. They got a ton of backups playing. I mean, basically a team of practice squad players beat a playoff team, the LA Rams. That's unbelievable. And it's a testament to how great the coaching is in San Francisco. Now the Browns and the Jaguars. I picked the Browns to win. It was actually really fun. It was back and forth. I, I was not expecting this to be a back and forth game. The Browns won 27 to 25. Uh, but the Jaguars quarterback, Mike Glennon, played very, very well. I went, oh, hey, wow. And uh, the Jaguars fight very hard every single week. They're no slouch. Baker Mayfield played very well. I got the game right, but I, I didn't expect Mike Glennon to do as well as he did. And I didn't expect this game to be back and forth and close and interesting the way it was. So 
wow, uh, Browns won, got it right technically, but I, I overshot how much I thought the Browns were going to win by. I just, I feel, I don't feel great about this one. I'm like, oh, I, I won on a technicality, but I didn't really get the prediction very correct. Uh, the Giants and the Bengals. I picked the Giants to win. Remember, Joe Burrow is not playing for Cincinnati. He's out for the year with an injury. And the Giants did win 19-17. to uh, But why was this game so close? Number one, um, the Bengals had a 103-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. It's a, a crazy good play. Uh, I think a lot of people in New York have given the Giants a lot of flack this week because their head coach is a former special teams coordinator. Ah, look, things happen. I mean, it's just every once in a while, even no matter how good you are at your job, you, you mess up, things go wrong. Um, but really a story from this game was that Giants quarterback Daniel Jones uh, hurt his hamstring pretty badly. He's likely not going to play next week. And what, what? Unfortunately, so he didn't play the rest of the game. Colt McCoy played. But unfortunately, the injury for Daniel Jones, the problem is, right now, his biggest asset is his, his ability to run. I mean, I, all year I've been going, the, the best, most threatening thing Daniel Jones can do is run the football. And he, he had a great throw, like a beautiful ball down the right sideline for a touchdown against Cincinnati. Um, and maybe, even if it wasn't a touchdown, it was like down to the one yard, something crazy. Like, it's a great deep ball. Like, Ooh, that's beautiful. Um, but uh, the Giants won... Unfortunately, Daniel Jones got hurt, and even if he's back and healthy, a, a huge part of this game, his ability to run, is probably going to be hampered the rest of the year. It's not good at all for New York, so unfortunate for them. Eagles and Seahawks, uh, Monday Night Football. I picked Seattle to win. They did win. They won 23-17. to DK Metcalf had a huge day. DK Metcalf, the receiver, had 10 catches for 177 yards. Uh, Seattle also had, their defense had six sacks. So they were getting steady pressure on Carson Wentz. And Carson Wentz, man, the Eagles quarterback, he had another ugly game. I'm ready to watch Jalen Hurts play quarterback for Philadelphia. I, I, I'm just, Carson Wentz is depressingly struggling. And I, is it coach? Is it quarterback? It's, I think it's kind of both. And I, I, I do know that every time I watch Philadelphia recently, I go, man, Jalen Hurts could be more accurate. Jalen Hurts probably could make better decisions and, I know the Eagles are paying Carson all this money, but I, I, I honestly, what, what I, my dream of dreams, what I want to happen, what I want to see happen is I want to see Carson Wentz traded to the Colts in the offseason. Get him back with Frank Reich, the coach he had a lot of success with on that Super Bowl season where he was probably could have been the MVP if he hadn't gotten hurt. And um, I just, uh, Carson Wentz needs different coaching. He needs a better roster around him. And I think a change of scenery would do Carson Wentz a lot of good. They're not going to do it. He's very expensive. But I, my my dream scenario is Carson Wentz getting traded to Indianapolis. Uh, I picked the Bills to beat the Chargers. This is another game I nailed. Buffalo won 27-17. And uh, the game was not as exciting as I would have hoped. I was hoping that Josh Allen versus Justin Herbert. The trade blows, and maybe maybe be back and forth for a little while. It really wasn't ever back and forth. Buffalo was up twenty four to six at one point, and uh, Justin Herbert. I mean, I Justin Herbert and the Chargers. They just keep losing and losing and losing and losing. And I I love watching Justin. He's great. Like he's fun to watch. Are they ever going to win games? Like I, it's. I mean, that argument is going to be, have to be made maybe in a couple of years from now if they're still losing the way they're losing. But every week I go, man, when is L.A. going to figure it out and win some football games? They're, it just, it's, it's frustrating to watch as a guy who I, I want to see Justin Herbert do very, very well. It's like, man, can this guy not figure it out? I, they're probably going to have to fire their coach, which is I like Anthony Lynn as a human being. But I, I, unfortunately, they're probably going to do it because they, they need to generate more excitement and they need to – uh, try to change whatever's going on there in L.A. I, I would give Anthony Lynn one more year. Uh, I think that it's what's what you got going on with Justin Herbert is working so well. I wouldn't want to mess with that chemistry, and I would chalk it up to it. You got COVID. It's a weird year. You're dealing with COVID. I, I, I would hope Anthony Lynn gets another opportunity, but I, I understand that they fire him as well. Saints at Broncos. I picked New Orleans to win this game. What I could not have predicted after Jeff Driscoll got COVID, a positive test, uh, Saturday before the game, it was found out that all four Broncos quarterbacks are ruled out of this game due to COVID. So 
literally they had Kendall Hinton, a wide receiver off the street, play quarterback for the Denver Broncos. He was one for nine passing at two interceptions. It was ugly. It was bad. It was just not fun to watch. It was sad. Um, a brutally ugly game. The Saints did win 31-3. to three. Uh, And the only reason why Denver got three points is because Taysom Hill, the Saints quarterback, threw an interception, which gave Denver really good field position. They went three and out, but they were still in field goal range, so they kicked a field goal, got three points. It was just a an ugly, bad, bad game up in Denver. Not fun to watch. The final game of the week... Uh, the Steelers and the Ravens game, it was not canceled. That did finally happen. I picked Pittsburgh to win. They did win the game. Uh, the Steelers won 19-14. to And after the game, a lot of people were going, Whoa, the Steelers are frauds. They're not very good. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, they're, you know, they're undefeated, but the Steelers, clearly, they're not very good. They haven't beat anybody. Well, I mean, the division, the AFC North plays the same people, whether it's the Browns or... Uh, the Bengals or the Ravens, and the Steelers are have won every game. I don't think I don't think Pittsburgh really cares how they win. They're just glad to win a game. So I don't know. I, I personally walked away from this game feeling like you know the crazy circumstances of this game it was a Wednesday football game. I think I did find out apparently there was a Thursday night game that got moved to a Wednesday. So it was a Ravens game. It was a, sorry, it was a Cowboys game actually to start the season got moved because of an Obama speech. So apparently there have been two Wednesday night games in NFL history. And the only person ever to play in both games, by the way, is Des Bryant. Very weird and unique. Like, huh, never, never would have, never would have even thought of that. Someone gave me a message, told me that. I'm like, huh, weird. Um, So the Steelers are undefeated still. Uh, I think I would chalk it up to, man. So it was a crazy game with weird circumstances around it. That's why the Steelers struggled. Also remember, the Ravens and Steelers have had the same coaching staff for years. And Mike Tomlin, John Harbaugh, they've been there forever. And they know each other very, very well. Every little intricacy, how to play each other, what each other likes to do, their tendencies. So anytime you, you get Steelers and Ravens, it's going to be close. I don't really care who's playing. Um, and I, I just walked away going, I, I, I'm not really... The, the same concern everyone has about Pittsburgh, I don't go... Oh yeah, they're they're clearly terrible because they're so bad. They're what they're twelve and zero now. I don't I don't walk away nervous about them at all. Uh, they're undefeated. I'm sure that's all they care about. And that is predictions versus reality for NFL Week Twelve.